Jeff Man down. Baxter, not a good free throw shooter at the line, trying to collect his seventh point of the game. Not the only thing that Baxter does not do well. He's got 30 career double doubles. When the game is over, he's the kind of player you figure did not do much. Then you look down, he's got 16 points left to rebound. Gets the second as Mike Krzyzewski takes out both Jason Williams and Carlos Boozer. Nick Horvath in as the big man in the post. And Baxter's not even going to guard Horvath. See, he's playing a one-man zone down inside. Good move. Dante Jones pulls up for the jumper and connects. He has his first basket of the game. That was a mistake by Mouton trying to double down on Horvath. you got to figure that Baxter can handle Horvath by himself. He allowed the open shot for Jones by going in there to help out. Ooh, almost a blind pass and uh, a good job done by by the Maryland Terrapins to maintain their control. It's, uh, showed you what a great this. soft bounce pass that was. Bouton, he's the one that got Maryland kick-started in the opening of the game, and he now has a dozen. Bouton only had six points in that first Duke game, but playing extremely well today. Jones and Blake steals it. No foul, and Blake to the other end. Shouldn't have been a foul. Good clean play by Blake who is putting on quite a show here today. They're going crazy in the Maryland student section. Look at that sea of red as they celebrate a 19-point lead. Dunleavy blocked by Mouton. They're going to call a foul on the play. Blake, who last year set an assist record here at Maryland and is working on becoming the all-time career assist leader as well. He's got 10 today, Billy, so he needs only four, four more. more to yep. pass Keith Gatlin. School record of 649, and Blake will do it in three years. He's only a junior out of Miami. You know, he even has an opportunity if the Ravens is going to catch a Bobby Hurley or an Ed Cota for the ACC League. And the National League. Hurley is the all-time. The ACC actually has the top three all-time assist men career-wise in NCAA history. Well, if there's an Achilles for this Duke team on the season, although they've lost only one game, it's been at the free throw line. And as a team, they're shooting only 68%. Wilcox a standing ovation as he goes off. Duke has been averaging 29 free throw attempts per game this year. Today, they're one for six. One for seven as Baxter rebounds. A team of this caliber, you would assume, would eventually be bit by not shooting uh, free throws well. It hurt him in the Florida State game and obviously hurt him today. Luton with a great pass to Juan Dixon. And Dixon now with nine. He's just one point away from making it 42 straight games in double figures. Great job by the Maryland players staying on the floor. Jason Williams looking to pass rather than score. Totally confused. Another Duke turnover to the delight of these Maryland fans. They've never trailed by that much the entire season. Duke number one, Kansas two beat Baylor yesterday. Maryland three. If Maryland goes on and uh, continues this very impressive play against the number one team, who's number one next week? Well, I think you've got to move Kansas up to number one. Maryland goes to number two, and Dick finds themselves again in that situation. Number two. They've yeah. been two in 20 weeks throughout their uh, life. But uh, you'd have to like Kansas' situation. 13 points for the state lead, but now it's 23-point lead as Dixon in double figures for the 42nd consecutive game for Maryland. And Duke has just not figured out how to play against this Maryland team. Everybody going one-on-one, -on -one, four men standing around. Nothing in unison for Duke whatsoever. Mike Krzyzewski has to look at this and say, this is a team I do not recognize. Taj uh, Holden with that foul as we remind you the conclusion of today's game. We'll select our Chevrolet most valuable players of the game from each team. Chevrolet makes a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund, a grand tradition for over a quarter of a century. This is Daniel Ewing, the 18-year-old freshman from Missouri City, Texas, and he falls into that pattern for Duke. They're one for nine, eight now, one for eight from the free throw line as Holden goes out. Well, I mentioned that Maryland is 19 and 0 when they shoot a higher percentage than their opponent. They're 32 and 0 when they commit fewer fouls than their opponent. And another miss 
And a foul on the push-off by Carlos Boozer. This is just a remarkably stunning game by Maryland. And for Mike Krzyzewski, must be wondering, here we're averaging 92 points a game this year, losing only once, that by one at Florida State, and only 39 points scored. We played almost 30 minutes. And then since their loss to Florida State, they've actually even been doing better than that. So this is really a turn of events. Yeah, every the backdoor wins. cut. Beautiful pass, and Wilcox is fouled by Boozer. Wilcox with that ability to stay in the air for a long time, and great hands that he has, even on the move. Third foul on Carlos Boozer. Part of the strategy for Gary Williams coming into this game, knowing that he had superior depth at the big man position down in the hole. He has four that he can play, was to try to get Boozer in foul trouble. Wilcox, as I said, was not a factor last year. This young man is coming on so strong, and you really can envision by the time this season is over, will there be a better Tucson inside than Baxter and Wilcox? I don't know about that. Hollison and Gooden probably, but not many others. Wilcox was 17 to lead Maryland, plus 10 rebounds. A double-double for the sophomore. Ewing had the shot, should have taken it. Dunleavy is fouled by Wilcox over the back. That will send Mike Dunleavy to the line for a pair. Wilcox has his second foul. Well, Wilcox has proven to be more than a matchup than I expected for Dunleavy. Dunleavy took him outside early in the game, but what has really broken down for Duke is without Jason Williams getting any penetration, so that that Wilcox would have to help out inside. There have been no kickouts for wide open threes. There's the three-man punch for Duke, and all of them having trouble getting on the scoreboard. Dunleavy had 10 in the first half. That's his first point in the second half. Nine and a half minutes in, his dad watches. Well, they have the first, the third, and the fifth leading scorer in the ACC in this threesome. They're not getting it done today. 64-41. Wow! Are you kidding me? Dixon, with everybody watching in the Duke team, gets a full-court pass. From Wilcox, he's shown us some versatility we saw yesterday in practice. Jason Williams, who has had trouble Jason scoring, finally Williams. gets two here in the second half, has nine for the game. No excuse for Duke to be beaten on a pass the length of the floor as they just were. Mouton off to Nicholas. Inside to Wilcox. He wants the ball. Absolutely. That's why. 19 for Wilcox. But maybe he has no chance whatsoever to play him down in the low post. And Wilcox has proven to be pretty good outside defensively. Boozer with the left hand. One of the few times today we've seen Duke able to get the ball into Boozer down in the low post. Finally in double figures, Carlos Boozer, the junior from Juneau, Alaska. He has 10. I think Wilcox is getting a little tired right now. Oh, no. Well, there he is. He missed the easy <laughs> slam, and it comes all the way out to our position at midcourt. He was actually up too high. We'll see this right now. There is no excuse if you're a good basketball team to be beaten on a play like this. Ewing, the freshman, should have been back there for that pass. Some throw by the quarterback. Oh, that's perfect. Wow. Looked like Lynn Swan catching it. There's a block this time on Blake. His second foul. Team fouls, three on Duke, six now on Maryland, so the next Maryland whistle will send the Blue Devils to the line. I thought Gary Williams right now may give Wilcox a little bit of a rest. He's been working so hard out there. All he needs is a couple of minutes off. Dunleavy for three. Up high is Drew Nicholas, who at 6-3 gives you a lot of spring as well. Ewing got away with a foul, pushed Blake underneath the basket. Maryland much fresher in this game. Wilcox inside, denied for a moment, and then the foul. Boozer with the block. Might have been done oh. from the back side. I don't know if fans saw that, but he threw the ball over his head without looking at the basket, and it went in. Obviously did not count. Dunleavy but has his third foul now. Everything going right for Wilcox. And they are taking a lot of Duke's confidence away in this. Here's Wilcox, gets blocked once, but comes right back. Puts it up against, it gets fouled. Now watch this. That ball, fans, went in. He threw it right over his head without even looking. And Wilcox at the line looking for his 20th point. If he makes this free throw, it will be a career-high game for Chris Wilcox. 
from Whiteville, North Carolina. He has the agility, as we've seen, at 6'10", to play outside, as does Dunleavy. And there it is, 20 for him, best ever in his two years here in Maryland, and a standing ovation for Wilcox. Great job by Gary Williams, taking him out right now. You can tell he was getting a little tired. Needs about a two-minute blow, but they won't fall off much with Todd Holden coming in the game. And Dunleavy to the bench with his fourth foul. Isn't that amazing? Duke looks hesitant to take the three. Jason Williams, that's his first three-pointer of the game. Jason Pretty good ball rotation that time by Duke, but Ewing passed up a three, as did Duhon. Williams, who leads Duke in threes made and attempted. Finally, one for seven from outside the arc. Trying to post up Dixon down inside on Williams. Nicholas not there. Quick hands, and Duke wins the battle. Jason Williams brings it across the half-court line. Duhon for three. Good rebound by Bruiser. Jason Williams, two in a row, and he can ignite in a hurry. Fans have seen that happen throughout the season, and suddenly Williams, who wasn't much of a factor offensively, has 15 for Duke. 69-51 as Gary Williams spends a 30-second timeout. Let's take a look at the next Nextel tournament favorite, University of Massachusetts against Maryland. The second round of the 94 NCAA tournament. Joe Smith led the Terrapins with 22 points and five boards as Maryland advanced to the Sweet 16 in that 94 tournament, finally losing to the Michigan Wolverines. Joe Smith, the last Maryland player to have 40 points. Who did he have against? Duke University. He and Lenny Bias had two great 40-point games. Bias with 41 and one of the great efforts ever seen in the Atlantic Coast Conference. And Joe Smith, the great inside performer, had 40 against Duke as well. Duke pulling to within 18 with eight minutes to go. Remember a year ago with 54 seconds left, Duke made up a 10-point deficit. And boy, what is happening with Dixon going down the low post? Jason Williams really having to work down inside. And here Good comes deal. Williams, two straight threes, and then the behind-the-back pass to Ewing. And a little run here for the Duke Blue Devils. And, and a foul. Holden late getting there. Wilcox with that two-minute sit-down is coming right back in. And a reminder coming up next, final round coverage of the L.A. Nissan Open from the Riviera Country Club in Pacific Palisades, uh, California. You see McCarran and Taniguchi at last report sharing the lead. Brad Faxon putting together a great tournament. So stay tuned for the best in the world out there at the Riviera in Los Angeles. Dick, one of the things that's really important with this game as well, and I know I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but come March, which team will be in the South, which team in the East? Because Kansas in the Midwest would play the East Regional winner if they get there. Cole Fieldhouse, uh, Maryland enjoyed that 25-point lead, and just like that, uh, Jason Williams and company, they get red hot, 11-1 to one run. They've gone from 25 down to 15 down. There's time left. But Wilcox back in the game, and you'd have to figure that that was just a, a, a little change in action there. I really feel that the superior team from start right up to this point has been Maryland. I think they're gaining a lot of confidence as to how they've been able to handle Duke on the defensive end of the floor. I want to get you back to that number one seed business. Uh, as Maryland and Duke apparently will both will earn number one seeds. Kansas certainly will at this point. At least at this point. And the way things are set up is, is that the team in the East would play the team in the Midwest. Mean, in the uh, semifinals of the Final Four. So we could have had going into this week a number one Duke against a number two Kansas. In, if they all won out through yeah. the semifinals. Long way to go. And we certainly learned today that nobody is going to go ahead and vote their way through this NCAA tournament. Duke's oh, inbounds pass. This time to Wilcox. The last time Wilcox went full court as Duke was sleeping for a full court layup. Everything going wrong for the Blue Devils. Horvath with his back turned, not seeing the man, the ball, and the passer, and gives up an easy play. Wilcox having a sensational day. Horvath's third foul, the three-point play. Converted by Wilcox, who has 23 points and 11 rebounds and a career game for this young sophomore. And now, now what we're seeing Williams do 
is to get back to that crossover move and start challenging Blake. And what's helping him is Duke is not setting solid screens. He's kind of in a clear-out situation.